In this video, I'll help you get started with the basics. What is Puppet and what does it do? I'll begin with a brief introduction to Puppet and its approach to automation. Next, I'll install the Puppet agent on a new system and use the Puppet resource tool to explore the state of that system. Through this tool, you'll learn about resources, the basic units that Puppet uses to describe and manage a system. I'll walk you through these steps using the Puppet Learning VM. This will give you a realistic view of what it's like to work with Puppet through a command line session on a system where the software is installed. If you'd like to follow along yourself, you can find a link in the notes below to the Learning VM download page and more information on setting up the Learning VM. Before getting started, I'll run the quest command on the Learning VM to set up the environment I'll be using to demonstrate these concepts. I'll start with a quick overview of what Puppet is. This way you'll have a better sense of how each topic fits into the bigger picture. Puppet lets you define a desired state for all the systems in your infrastructure you want to manage. Once this state is defined, Puppet automates the process of getting these systems into that state and keeping them there. Puppet uses a domain-specific language called Puppet Code to describe this system state in a way that's portable across all the devices and operating systems you need to manage. This infrastructure-as-code approach opens the door to a whole range of DevOps best practices, such as version control, compliance validation, continuous integration, and automated testing. Puppet code is a declarative language, which means that you describe only the desired state for your systems, not the steps needed to get there. Instead, you rely on the Puppet agent to translate this desired state into commands that it then executes with native system tools. The Puppet agent also handles communication with the Puppet master, the server that stores Puppet code defining desired state for all your agent systems. For now, I'll set aside the agent's interactions with the Puppet master and focus on the tools that Puppet uses to inspect and modify a system's state. When you install the Puppet Agent, you get a set of command line tools that help you interact directly with the system in the same way the Puppet Agent does. Using these tools will help you understand how the Puppet Agent sees and modifies the state of a system where it's running. Though I'll be focusing on the local Puppet Agent in this demonstration, I'll be working in the context of the master agent architecture set up on the Learning VM environment. To get started, I'll use SSH to connect to the agent node set up for this demo, hello.puppet.vm. The login is learning and the password is puppet. Now that I'm connected to the system, I'll need to install the puppet agent. The master server hosts an install script, so I can run a curl bash command to load the agent installer from the master and run it on my agent system. You can find full documentation of the agent installation process, including specific instructions for other operating systems in the installation documentation, which I'll link to below this video. As I mentioned earlier, the Puppet agent comes with a set of supporting tools you can use to explore a system from Puppet's perspective. Now that the agent is installed, I'll use these tools to demonstrate some of the key ways Puppet interacts with the system it manages. One of Puppet's core concepts is the resource abstraction layer. This refers to a set of tools that Puppet uses to translate back and forth between the resources defined in your Puppet code and the actual state of those resources on a system. The term resource refers to a distinct unit of configuration on a system such as a user, file, service, package, or one of many other built-in or user-defined resource types. The Puppet resource tool lets you directly interact with system resources through the same abstraction layer used by the Puppet agent. Exploring a system with the Puppet resource tool will give you a better idea of how Puppet can describe and interact with the system you want it to manage. For example, I can ask Puppet to describe a file resource on my system by specifying the type file and passing in the path of the file I want to look at. 
What you see is the puppet code representation of this resource. In this case, the resources type is file, and the path is slash temp slash test. Let me break down the anatomy of this resource syntax so you can understand it a little better. The resource type tells Puppet what kind of thing the resource describes and helps Puppet find the set of tools it needs to manage that resource on the system. The body of a resource is the list of parameter value pairs that follow the pattern parameter, an operator called a hash rocket, and then the assigned value. The parameters and possible values vary from type to type. The list of parameter value pairs describes the state of the resource on the system. Full documentation for resource parameters can be found in the resource type reference, which I'll link to below this video. The resource title is a unique name that Puppet uses to identify the resource internally. In the case of the file resource example, the resource's title is the path of the file on the system slash temp slash test. Each resource type has a unique identifying feature that the Puppet resource tool uses as the resource title when it inspects that resource. For example, a user resource uses the account name as a title, and a package resource uses the name of the package. Now that you're a little more familiar with the syntax, let's take another look at that file resource. Notice that it has a single parameter value pair, ensure absent. The ensure parameter describes the basic state of the resource. For the file type, this parameter says whether the file exists on the system, and if it does, whether it's a normal file, a directory, or a link. So ensure absent is telling me that this file doesn't exist. Let's see what happens when I use the touch command to create a new empty file at that path. Now I'll use the Puppet resource tool again to see how this change is represented in Puppet's resource syntax. Now that the file exists on the system, Puppet has a little bit more to say about it. It shows the ensure and content parameters and their values, plus information about the file's owner, when it was created, and when it was last modified. The value of the content parameter might look a little different than what you expected for an empty file. When the Puppet resource tool interprets a file in this resource declaration syntax, it actually converts all the content to an MD5 hash. This hashing process helps Puppet efficiently compare the contents of a file on your system against the expected content and see if any change is necessary. Let's see what happens when I use the Puppet resource tool to add some content to the temp test file. Running the Puppet resource tool with a parameter equals value argument tells Puppet to modify the resource on the system to match the value you set. I'll use this to set the content of this file resource to the string hello Puppet. The output you see shows Puppet checking the hash of the existing content against the new content I just provided. When it sees that the hashes don't match, it sets the file's content to the value of the command's content parameter. Now I can take a look at the file's content to see the change. This translation back and forth between the state of a system and Puppet's resource syntax is the heart of Puppet's resource abstraction layer. Let's take a look at another resource type, the package. As an example, a look at the package for the Apache web server HTTPD. Because this package doesn't exist on the system, Puppet shows you the ensure purged parameter value pair. This purged value is similar to the absent value you saw earlier for the file resource. But in the case of the package resource, it specifies that the package itself is absent and all the associated configuration files have been purged. Each resource type has a set of providers. A provider is the translation layer that sits between Puppet's resource representation 
and the native system tools Puppet uses to inspect and modify the underlying system state. Each resource type typically has a variety of different providers that can be used to manage the resource on different operating systems and through different system tools. These providers can seem invisible when everything is working correctly, but it's important to understand how they interact with the underlying system tools. The quickest way to see what a provider is doing in the background is to give it an input that causes an error message to be shown. I'll tell Puppet to install a non-existent package called Bogus Package. The error message shows that the yum package manager wasn't able to find the specified package. It also shows the specific command that Puppet's yum provider tried to run to install the package. Puppet selects a default provider based on the operating system and whether the tools associated with that provider are available. I'll install the same bogus package again, but this time let's see what happens when I use the gem provider. Puppet outputs a similar error, but this time you can see that it tried to run a gem command instead of a yum command. Now that you have a little bit of a better sense of how Puppet's providers offer an interface to system tools, I'll install a real package with the default yum provider. This time, Puppet successfully installed the package and displays the new state of the resource. The value of the ensure parameter now shows the specific version of the installed package. I didn't specify a version of the package to install, so the yum provider defaulted to installing the latest available version. In this video, we started with an overview of Puppet, its declarative domain-specific language, and the master agent architecture. I installed the Puppet agent on a new system using an install script hosted on the Puppet master. Once the agent and suite of supporting tools were installed, I went over the fundamentals of Puppet's resource abstraction layer, including resources, resource types, and the providers that translate between your Puppet code and native system tools. In the next video, I'll go into some of the details of how Puppet takes advantage of this resource abstraction layer to help you define a desired state for your systems and automate the process of enforcing this state on the systems you want to manage.